Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about your life cycle of agaricus, uh, which is commonly called as mushroom. So basically it's an edible fungus uh, and grows on saprophytic matter. That is when we talk about saprophytic, basically we are talking about dead and decaying organic matter, wood logs, then uh, manure piles and many other substratum can be used uh, besides this is it grows well on a moist and a shady environment and mostly prefers rainy season and then we have uh, with us uh, like um, agaricus campestris and agar agaricus bisporus those are the two most common and uh, commonly grown cultivated mushrooms so let us see the vegetative mycelium is found under the soil and entangled with a thick uh, woolen masses. Those uh, woolen masses are known are microscopic in nature and they are also known as spawns. Basically, they are the starting material for germination. Now, on the maturation of the, uh, such masses, the fructification called the mushroom is developed. Now, fructification basically are those fungal structure on which the spores are born. In this case, we'll see the residual spores. The cells of the hyphae are mm, uninucleate at first but very soon gets dichoritic stage when uh, when it comes to dichoritic diamonds too so there will be two nucleus now the two adjacent hyphae or the strain that is positive and negative strain they come in close contact and get fused as it gets fused uh, the nucleus from one of the hyphae gets passed to the residue uh, or the adjacent cell of the hyphae resulting in the formation of dicaryotes or and the process is known as dicaryotization so let us uh, look at the reproduction path now reproduction part is uh, basically the um, the subterranean mycelium grows in all direction and forms an inv invisible colony at the time of sporulation now sporophores are formed at the tips of the hyphae and thus forms a circular ring known as the fairy ring so we will see in the um, subsequent slides so what are those now to, uh, to remember that uh, please keep that in mind asexual reproduction is usually absent in Mm, agaricus however sexual reproduction uh, here somatogamy that is fusion of two somatic hyphae of opposite strain is the only means by which dicaryotization and the formation of secondary mycelium takes place that is basically your plus and minus strain that we talked in the previous slide so let us see the development of basidio now when fungal hyphae or knots swellings are formed from the underground secondary mycelium which are rhizomorphous in nature these knots gradually increases in size and becomes oval or round and constitutes the button stage so that's why you'll see that um, your agaricus or, or bisporus is also known as button mushroom so that is one of the reason now let us see the structure of the basidiocarp or sporophore now this is the structure of the basidio carp mm, so as you can see here basidio uh, carp are multicellular structure on which sexually repro uh, producing hymenium are produced we will see uh, later on when we see the subsequent slides but for the time being you can just uh, take down here what you can see is that uh, this umbrella like portion is the pileus uh, on the ventral surface of the or the inner side of the pileus are gill like structure radiating from the uh, uh, radiating from within the pileus then we have a stalk like structure that is the stripe and on stripe just above the stripe a thin membranous like structure is there that is known as annulus and besides this you can see these are the mycelium now let us see the structure of the pileus so when you take this uh, section of a uh, pileus uh, this is what you see in the figure what you can see is that it consists of a uh, um, trauma that is the outermost layer or the outer layer or the central basically or what you can see is the central portion of the gill and these are multinucleate in nature then comes the subhymenium layer these are the middle region uh, which is also multinucleate in nature and the hymenium layer is the fertile layer please keep that in mind this hymenium layer is the fertile layer on which you get to see the development of basidium and basidium uh, basically are structures uh, where you uh, where basically the structures that produce sexually uh, reproducing spores and we are talking about sexual reproduction part because we have uh, talked in the previous slide that uh, reproduction is sexual in nature asexual re re reproduction is basically absent now what you can see in this uh, on this uh, basidium mm, there are stigma like structures develop on the tips of those there are basidio spores however in some structure those uh, where st uh, basidio spores are not produced or stigmata are not there those are known as paraphy paraphyses and they are sterile in nature 
let us see the development of basidium and basidiospore a young basidium is at first binucleate now as it increases in size there is a fusion of two haploid nuclei and simultaneously zygote nucleus that is uh, 2x migrates towards the apex of the basidium now this zygote nucleus uh, undergoes division to form four daughter nuclei then once the after nuclear division is over there is a development of slender or projections known as sterigmata as you can see here these are the in the diagram these are the sterigmata now each sterigma swells at the distal end and the nucleus from the basidium migrates into the cell that cuts off its basidiospore and the sterigma now a small droplet uh, once this process is over a small droplet of liquid appears upon the helium and the basidiospore along with the drop of liquid suddenly shoots off from the stirring matter now once uh, these basidiospores are shooted off uh, they germinate on the advent of favorable conditions uh, to keep in mind uh, those are your humidity moisture then shady condition then rainy season these are the favorable environment so under favorable environment or conditions giving rise to primary monokaryotic high mycelium now mono means one so there will be n later on uh, the hyphae of the two strain that is plus and my, minus and as to most of use with each other and a dikaryotic mycelium develops which gives rise to spawn and fructification so fructification basically you have seen the structure when we talked in the previous slides now let us see in general the overall uh, life cycle of a uh, agaricus now you see here uh, if you see in the structure the mature basidio carp it has annular stripe and failures those umbrella -like, like structure and on the ventral surface or the inner surface of the pileus you get the gills or lamellae now you can see in the second one uh, the gills are there and when we take the section of the gill or um, yeah when we take the section of the gill what you see in, in that you see that trauma is the uh, layer stroma is the basically the middle portion or the middle layer then you have sub hymenium followed by your your hymenium layer which is sterile in nature and in this hymenium you get the uh, sterigma along with the uh, sterigma along with the basidio spores besides this basidium is also there when we single out one basidium with basidio spores so what you see is that the spores are discharged as with the droplet of helium or the water uh, droplets uh, some kind of a droplets are there so these basidio spores are usually monokaryotic and they develop monokaryotic hyphae so those two monokaryotic hyphae undergoes diagnosis characterization then its fusion takes place and the nucleus of one migrates to the other as a result you get the dikaryote dikaryot stage now dikaryotic stage we, uh, or dikaryotic hyphae with swelling so you can see there is some kind of swelling in this uh, figure just below the young basidios curve you can see three different swellings are there so as this uh, swellings develop they develop into a young basidio curve and later on the basidio, young basidio curve matures into a um, mature basidio curve and then the cycle keeps on continuing so this is in general the life cycle of heterothelic uh, species of agaricus to be precise uh, we are talking about uh, mostly the edible fungus now this was all about your uh, fungal life cycle of agaricus now some of the economic importance is that uh, they are they are have a rich source of protein vitamins and minerals so they can be used as a substitute for protein rich diet so this was all about your life cycle of agaricus thank you and have a nice day